local webcasting for a worldwide audience. Try a bit of sliding things there. Right. Yes, welcome <laughs> to Vapor Trials. This is Radio Lewis for the Music Matters. My name's Steve Brooks. And I'm joined in the studio today by Karen from Hey Got Womb. Hello, nice uh, to meet you. Nice to meet you too, <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm actually trying this is new, speaking over something. It's called bedding apparently. Oh. So uh, whose phone is that? I've turned my phone off, You've honestly. I've turned my phone off. Oh, as well. shit. I'll, put, I'll put the music <laughs> up. things that happen in the studio, eh? <laughs> I was like, oh, that phone's never wrong. We've been here two years. <laughs> that's, like, that's so weird. Okay, right. Okay, Karen, we'll make a start. I was going to say, yeah, talking over a track like this is called bedding, okay. uh, apparently. Sounds quite saucy. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> yes. I, I had Ali uh, um, um, lady explain it to me last <laughs> night. But, um, yeah, anyway, I think we'll crack on and okay. uh, play your first track, love. Okay. okay. Looking forward to it.
clash, of course, with Train in Vain. So, yeah, lovely one to start with, Karen. Thank you. I picked that because they're my favourite ever band, and it's not just because Paul Simonon was the sexiest ever bass player. <laughs> and I always just wish someone had written a song like that for me. I think it's one of the most romantic songs ever. Well, well of course, your, your partner does play in a band, so you could ask him. <laughs> I don't think he'd come up with that. But also, having re- just read the book by Viv again, yeah. it struck me as how sad, because their relationship didn't work. It's a, it, it is a, actually a record about them breaking up, and she didn't yeah. believe in love. Right. And it kind of takes away from the beauty of the song, but also adds to it the fact that she had the most beautiful song ever written about her yeah and yeah. now she's sad about that but she didn't really appreciate it at the time no i suppose that's one of those things though isn't it sometimes you don't see the see the wood for the trees and all that malarkey but yes we'll, we'll come back to viv yes. at the end of the show actually but yeah you got some cracking stuff on it and not necessarily what i was expecting no, I think I'm a punk rocker that accidentally became a punk rocker, mainly out of a lack of talent for anything else. But that doesn't mean I like that much punk rock music. Right, so when did you start then with Hey Girl Womb? We started when I was 17. I met them all at Sixth Form College, right. and we all started hanging around about at the Wapping Anarchy Centre. Right. And there were lots of other boys forming bands, and we just thought, what the hell? Why don't we start a band? We were right. all girls then. Right, But yeah. actually, sadly, as some of us realised, we couldn't play any instruments. We had to draft some men <laughs> in, too. <laughs> yeah, just to be musical slaves as such, really. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I was supposed to be the drummer, but I realised oh, I had really? no sense of rhythm, <laughs> and so that's why I became a singer. But also our other motivation was that we really fancied a band called Flux of Pink Indians. Right, yes. And so there was a gig in five weeks' time with Flux. Right. And so we formed the band in order to try and get off the of oh. Flux of Pink Indians. Well, do, you know, do you know what? That's the weird thing, because that's exactly what teenage boys do as well. I know, but we it? never got yeah. off with them. No, no well, I must admit, you know, all the bands I, I was ever in, nothing ever happened to me. And no. saying that, though, I, I did actually uh, marry someone. Oh. And I'm still with them. So that's something. Yeah, that, that is that, very that, impressive. That, I've that never was... got a single shag out of being in a band ever. <laughs> <laughs> Which may say a lot about our band, but it's well, never possibly, led to sex. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, yes, actually, that brings on a, a good link onto the next title. God only knows. So, <laughs> I, I think yes, we'll have some very unpunk like Beach Boys then. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Yes, God only knows why we never got a shag out of rock and roll, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of know why I didn't get a <laughs> yeah, yeah, shag out yeah, yeah. of rock and roll. But, uh, yeah, we're just saying you, you can't beat a lovely tune, can you, really? No, you can't. It doesn't matter what your background is. You just, it can't. No, I mean, this is from my favourite ever album, Pet Sounds. Yeah. I love it. It's, it's an album I listened to a lot when I was growing up. My mum and dad played it a lot. Right. I, they didn't pass on a love of Bob Dylan or Joni Mitchell, but they gave me right. love of the Beach Boys. Oh, right, yeah. OK, well, I was saying the next track is, kind of, I suppose, more familiar territory with the Poison yes. Girls. Um, did you ever play with the Poison Girls? We did. Yeah. We played quite a lot with the Poison Girls, and they were an amazing inspiration to us. Viv, yeah. who was about 50 at that time, right, and we were 18. Yeah. And we <laughs> couldn't believe that women of that age would go on stage and would be so impressive and vital. And so yeah. she's actually, they are my favourite band of the Anarchist era, even though I loved Crass and other other bands like that. The Poison yeah. Girls were my favourite, but particularly because there weren't many other performers like that at the time. Right, yeah. And this particular song, Persons Unknown, is quite melodic, isn't yes. it? And it's got that kind of, it just keeps going. Mm. Going on, doesn't it? And, and she kind of covers almost all of humanity. Yes. <laughs> well, it does take a while. <laughs> it takes a good seven minutes, I think. But but yeah, it's just like she mentions almost every kind of strata of British society, doesn't she? In, in... I, I think that's one of the other reasons why I like it, because I think a lot of anarchist punk can be guilty of just going on about the system and the yeah. system and the system. Yeah. And this was about people, and she was always about people, and I was very lucky to hear her sing it on her 80th birthday at a, wow. a kind of private birthday party, and she still yeah. sang it as beautifully as yeah. she did then. Yeah. But... I always, always get confused with sister and assistant. <laughs> so, so I thought Not many punk, punk bands no. assistants. <laughs> I thought they were like angry plumbers. <laughs> but, uh, OK, right. So this is Persons Unknown and Poison Girls. <laughs> Unknown habits of hiding soon will be the death of us.
Yeah, she certainly was amazing, wasn't she? Oh, she is. Still. No, 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 she, she, pa- no, oh, she right. sadly she, she, died a few right. years ago. No, but she was amazing. And yeah, yeah. So, talking to death. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, this next one apparently is your funeral song you it said. is I want to be chucked into the sea to this song because I think it's really? some, even well, though I'm a miserable old git actually <laughs> I do think this is your my motto for life even though I'm a curmudgeonly old sod oh, right. that's brilliant actually would it be off the end of the pier I'd love to be thrown off the end of the pier. I'm learning to sea swim at the moment, so oh, really? actually I may actually get my oh, I yeah. may get the death of my choice and drown in the sea. Anyway. <laughs> yes, they might just redirect the helter skelter for you. Just yes. go zooming off. That would be there the way go. I'd love yeah, to die. Yeah, wrapped, wrapped in a carpet. <laughs> yes, that would be the way I'd like okay. to go. Okay, uh, and so and so the song that we'll be playing as you are yes. swept out to eternity <laughs> will be this. <laughs> first it's good funeral song yes. uh, and keeping on a happy note <laughs> you just said that what, what you've chosen the next song yes i chose this because my first boyfriend who i met in a queue to see the birthday party this was his favorite song and sadly he died a few years ago right. but he was always found at the front shrieking and dancing to this song and so it reminds me of him oh bless i know and now our bass player mitch goes yeah. on stage with the meek on some ruins this song <laughs> And I think they should play it like this rather than Mitch doing it. 
And so just letting Mitch anywhere near it. I know. Yeah. I wouldn't put Mitch near any song, but this song does genuinely make me cry. Right. Okay. Well, I've run out of tissues, unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, we'll try and see what we can find. Maybe a bit of old carpet. Anyway, this is the Mekons, and where were you? sweet. I know, not many of mine are, but that is short <laughs> and sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's no, it's brilliant, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the Mekon, so that's from 77, isn't it, I think? Yes, and that just reminds me of the good old days when you used to go to see lots of bands during the minor strike, and yeah. the Mekons, the Three Johns, and bands like that, you'd see four or five of them for £1.50. <laughs> Money was going to a good cause, <laughs> and you know, saw great I, bands. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, funny enough, because on, on the live show in here, what we do is we go through the gig listings around Lewis, and... Uh, Nearly all the gigs are free now, which is really? quite nice, yeah. Um, but even the ones with visiting bands are not that expensive. No, know? it's so shocking when I look back and I, I saw the birthday party for £1.50 <laughs> in a C&D benefit. And I'm sure even with the passage of time, that's still a yeah. lot cheaper than it is to well, see yes, them at yeah, the O2. Yeah, yeah. What's that song, um, Part-Time Punks, when they're talking about they've got two fifty <laughs> to see The Clash tonight? Well, one of the reasons we <laughs> split up first time round was we had a massive fight outside Dingwalls about playing for more than one night. 99. And me and Mitch <laughs> stormed off because it was against our policy and the rest of the band played without us. Oh, and then right. we split up for 30 years as a result <laughs> of playing for too much oh, at Dingwalls. Did, did they ever share that money with you? <laughs> I've they, never they, made any money out no, of the band, no. ever. And so there's nothing to share. No, no. So anyway, going from short and sweet to uh, um, long and um, not so sweet, long and sour, perhaps. Yes, this is reflective on my absolute love of hardcore American punk. Right. And I couldn't choose between this or Husker do all the butthole surfers but in the end I went for this it's very very angry it's very despairing it's about growing up in a very boring city which obviously and growing up in London I didn't grow up with that right. but I can still relate to the anger yeah. and the fury yeah uh, and uh, Steve Albini in his uh, big black days and uh, yeah didn't get any angry did he <laughs> so he's like, a very intense guy he's intense yeah, you ever met him I have met him and yeah. he kind of stared at me <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. That, that's a t shirt, isn't it? Yeah. Steve Albini stared at me. Yeah. Right, okay, this is Big Black and Kerosene. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's Vapor Trails on Radio Lewis.
Well, that sounded familiar. It does sound familiar <laughs> to me. you, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it does. And obviously, one of the reasons I came on here, apart from to see you, was to shamelessly plug this record. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Just another capitalist <laughs> shrill. I yeah, don't know. <laughs> no, I, I didn't want to meet you. I didn't want to be on no, this. I just no, want no. to plug our record. Yeah, Agitate out yeah. on Grow Your Own Records. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, yeah. And that's a 10 inch as well, apparently. It is, and it's on very pretty vinyl is as well. It? Yeah. yeah, It sounds great, though. I mean, that's the thing. Is, um... We have progressed a bit. The musicians have got better. The singers yeah. may not have got better, and we still haven't <laughs> learned the words. But we have progressed as a band, and now we've actually been together longer this time round than we were first time round. Right, yeah. I suppose the production slightly better as well. The production is a lot, a lot better. We once recorded a John Peel session and Dale Griffin said we were the worst band he'd ever had in the studio. So I like to think we've That's got better. That's quite something. Yeah, they should have a plaque for you. <laughs> we didn't care because they were actually very cheap egg and chips on <laughs> in, the, in the BBC canteen. But oh no. my word, yeah. So are you touring at the moment then or playing anything live? Or We're actually playing a gig next month in Berlin because right. we have to stop for a few months because our guitarist lives in a van and can't get out of his van because of the mud. Right. <laughs> so we're playing in Berlin. Um, that's next the trouble. Month. That's the trouble with glam rock bands from the seventies, <laughs> hanging around people's vans. <laughs> and then we're not. We're playing in um, Brighton the eleventh of April at oh, the Albert. Of course, Albert. you're playing at the Albert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is gone, that sold out? Uh, I don't think so. So please come get your tickets. Don't let us be lonely. But no. also, we find we we live in different countries. One of us lives in Wales. We've right. got children. We've got jobs, and so it takes a lot more effort. We used to play about four nights a week. Yeah. when we were first time round, but now the amount of energy it takes to get well, us yeah, into one kind of, room... That's quite... kind of what that song's about as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. I mean, we, we wanted to write a song about what it was like to be a middle-aged woman in punk rock, and <laughs> right. we, we think we've succeeded. We're probably the yeah. only people, apart from my Doris, who've got a song about middle-aged women in punk right, rock. Right, OK. <laughs> um, playing with um, uh, Stephen Vasco's band, aren't you? I certainly no, am. I, I, I couldn't remember their name now, the Bone Records. <laughs> yes, no, it's always good to have someone that you live with playing <laughs> on the same... It means he can give me a lift to the venue. Right, it doesn't put any additional pressure on you, does it? <laughs> no. We don't share any, much taste in music, so he'll glow when yeah. we're on, and I'll glow when he's oh, on. No, actually, I, I, I like the Bone Records. I, I, I saw him um, support... Who did I see him supporting? You were there. I know I was there. I can't remember. No, they're a great band. They're, yeah. you know, very poppy, very melodious. It's good yeah. to see them out there. And, uh, OK, so next up... Oh, God. Uh, um, what we got next? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I looked further down, actually. I was looking at another funeral song. But no, no, we haven't. We've got a bit more optimistic one haven't we now well this is because my lovely partner Steve he's a mod and a soul boy and likes Faye indie pop yeah and obviously I like hardcore punk and disco and so Dex's is probably the one place where we meet and right, we both yeah. love Dexies, and they're a band that just keep giving. I love their new stuff as much as I love yeah. their old stuff. But yeah. I think this is a very joyous one. Yeah, I, I like to listen to it when I'm running. Yeah, and probably one of the best albums ever made. Oh, as well. it, it, it's stupendous, yeah. and I just think he is a genius. Absolutely right. So this is Dexies Midnight Runners. <laughs>
Yeah, I love that. Oh, That's it's brilliant. Amazing. brilliant. And next up, <laughs> you said you're going to be embarrassed and silly, uh, be silly and embarrass yourself. And I was like, no, really? <laughs> I'm afraid so. This, uh, I must admit, one of the attractions for live music has always been for me to stare at men on stage. Right, I fair really enough, yeah. love seeing men perform on stage, even though I'm a feminist. Yeah. And what can I say about Bill Callahan? But he's a real hottie and he's particularly hot in this. I remember having a massive strop when I went to see Joanna Newsom at the Green Man because she got to shag him. <laughs> <laughs> so I did pick this just because yeah. this is one of the sexiest songs I can think I, of. I think the listeners are starting to see a theme in this show. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. yeah, so, so yes. So, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Oh, sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to upset. Uh, yeah, what I love about this is the album's called dongs of Savotion. Mm-hmm. i is. do i do like spoonerism <laughs> but yeah so uh yeah any other reason for playing this apart from i mean I, I do really love americana and it was a really hard choice between this mid lake right yeah wilco lots of bands like that that yeah. really really have influenced my life i fell in love with country music because of the mekons and right, fear yeah. and whiskey and then went into american yeah. country music but an Americana, but this is my favourite, partly because I want to shag him. Right, okay, right. If you're listening, Bill. uh... (laughs) I don't think so. He's just written an album about being married and having a baby, and so I don't think I'm going to get... you know, I thought he was a regular listener to Radio Lewis as well. Right, so, anyway, moving along. Yeah, Smog, dressed sexy at my funeral. All 
also tell them about how I gave to charity. Try to love my fellow man best I could. But most of all, don't forget about the time.
years if you check. Don't worry, me happy. Was a number one jam. Damn, if I said you could slap me right here. Get it? Let's get this party started right. Right on. Come on. What we got to say? Yeah. Power to the people, no delay. Make everybody see. In order to fight the powers that be. enemy i just remember loving rap from the minute it came out it right. was cross it was angry it was american and, and it had funny moves and even though i used to belong to the elvis presley fan club God, there's nothing wrong with that no no <laughs> but i just love the way they diss him yeah. and quite rightly call him out and also yeah. i saw them a, about a year or two ago right at the concord in brighton and they were so punk rock they wouldn't get off stage even though they were told they were going to be fined ten thousand pounds for over, going over the curfew they played for one and a half extra hours oh my god they had to be pulled <laughs> off the stage in the end and i actually thought that was much more punk rock than most punk rock bands and yes so yes absolutely they're yeah. really cool and so yeah. i chose them than the more nicer bands yeah. like that that you were saying about like de la soul i love de la soul but yeah. i'm just really connected to the anger of Public yes, enemy. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Della Sol were uh, kind of like the less threatening ones mm. to us uh, skinny white people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, the thing is, I remember hearing Public Enemy for the first time and not realising because that Petra Mosen used to play them um, like before they went on. Oh. So you know, old bands would have like a little mm. tape or whatever playing before they started. And I remember listening to this, and it was like um, Yo Bum Rush the show, like the first oh, album. Wow. And it was always like metallic noises and stuff. And I'm like, what on earth's that? But yeah, the, the, that petrol guys were uh, well up on it at the at the time. Um, I don't like many bands that don't have very loud guitars in, as you can yeah, tell yeah, from the other yeah, ones I chose. Exactly, but I think yeah. they really spoke out to me. They were cross. They were angry. Yeah. I keep saying cross and angry, but they were cross and angry, <laughs> and they had lots of reasons. And <laughs> yeah, absolutely. God knows what they think now of Trump. Well, well I, don't, I know. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure. Actually, well, this is the thing, isn't it? It's, it's with uh, Trump and everything else. Um, all that sort of stuff always means there's going to be some sort of counter-movement, counter-culture, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be more... Well, we played in America last last year, and what we were shocked to find was actually they pity us. They talked to us about why why did you go for Brexit? Why did you choose Boris? And you know, I, I've got a fight Trump start a punk band placard that I had in the window until the kids made me take it down. And now they pity us. Yeah, well, that's 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 because we believe in irony. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, talking to guitars. Uh, well, I had yeah. to choose this because this is now my band that I love irrationally, beautifully. Nicky Wire is my rock husband, number one. Right. And when they replayed the Holy Bible a few years ago, I stood and held the stage for three hours before they came on. Oh. They're the reason I wear leopard spot. Right. My granny's Welsh. <laughs> and this isn't actually my favourite song of theirs. No. Holy Bible is my favourite album. Yeah. But this is a standalone song. And also, I used to work for the council for many years. And I love libraries. And yeah, I love yeah. the opening song, yeah, the, 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 the opening line of yeah, this. There's not many that actually <laughs> uh, open with a line about libraries, is there, no. really? And the fact that, you know, the power within the library for the ordinary person. Oh, God. And as they try and get rid of them now, even though we need them to claim benefits and things like yeah. that, you know, we need libraries more than ever. When my children were young, I used to make my children sit there for six hours at a time. <laughs> you know, you didn't if... give them a book. You just made them sit there. <laughs> Everyone needs libraries and the bastards are trying to shut them down. Absolutely, and that's yeah. one of the... That and also Nicky Wire are the two reasons why I love yeah. this song. So this is the Mannix and Design for Life.
I love the drums at the end of that. Mm, I love his little, guitar playing. Yeah, yeah, little Sean on his drums there. Did, oh. you, know, did you know Sean played in the Welsh um, brass band or something like oh, that? He bless played because there's a track he plays trumpet on. Oh, right. oh yeah, tr- yeah. And he was actually a, a youth trumpet oh. player. Oh, because I always feel sorry for him because he's sitting there with his funny gloves on. <laughs> I, I would just rather be Nicky Wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose so. Yeah, um, yeah. I always feel for drummers that have to, have to sit behind everyone, don't they? But they are weird people. Why would you want to be the ones that bang the sticks? Well, We've uh, had nine drummers in our band, and they've all been the oddest people apart from... Well, no, they're not really, but they're quite strange. <laughs> Some of my best friends are drummers, you know. <laughs> the singers get to show off. No one wants to shag a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thinking of Keith Moon, you probably wouldn't get... Well, I don't know. Anyway... That aside... <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> OK, next up, you've got some Teenage Fan Club. Oh, now, well, this is my love of jingly jangly bands. And right. Teenage Fan Club are one of the bands, along with the Me Cons, that I've seen the most. Really, They yeah. should have been enormous. Well, yeah. And they write the best and most beautiful songs. And last year, me and my friend Helen went to see Jerry play his last gig and cried. When oh, right, And Bandwagon yeah. Esque is one of my favourite albums yeah. ever. And they should have been huge. Yeah, because I used to see them a lot when that album came up because mm. they supported everyone. Yes. So I, I went to see the Buzzcocks. They supported them. Um, Wedding Present, they'd support them. All these other bands I'd go and see. And they were Teenage Fan Club as the support band. So I probably ended up seeing them loads. And very weirdly, because this is a very joyous song, me and my partner Steve got into the habit of playing it because we're marathon training at the moment. Oh, my Lord. And if you have to get up at half past seven on a Sunday morning, it's pissing with rain or (laughs) snow... Actually, this song is the best song to listen to as you're driving to yet another destination to run up right, a big hill yeah. in the mud. Now, now, I heard that you took up running to help you pogo on stage. I did. I was a very <laughs> unfit, middle-aged woman. And then I realised, if you're on stage, you're actually there jumping up and down for an hour yeah. while trying to sing. And so I took up marathon running. And this is now one of my favourite songs to get me to the start yeah. of any run. Because, strange enough, Joe, Joe Strummer used to run marathons I know, as well, he did. Didn't he? Yeah. I that... think he did it a lot faster than me. <laughs> it is. It is very okay. handy. It all depends what you're taking, I guess, on the day. But it's um, but yeah, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Old, old musicians, old punks. All well, I think you go around. one of either way. Either you take a lot of drugs and you end up on crutches, or like me, you cut down on the drink and drugs and you take up running because it's a tough life playing gigs. And yeah. so yeah. being fit is a way to deal with it. <laughs> OK, right then. So just for you and Steve and all those old punk runners out there, this is Teenage Fan Club and Ain't That Enough.
Yeah, I never understood why they didn't. Massive. Should have been. They should have been. They had the tunes. They yeah. had lovely names. They had lovely accents. And yeah. they should have they, been they massive. They had nice hair as well. They I did have remember. very nice yeah, hair. Yeah. No, I know. Me and my best friends at the time, we used to take turns in which one was ours. But yeah. one of my <laughs> friends loved Norman most, and so she used to not let us have Norman. No, no. So we used to fight over Raymond yeah, it, and Jerry. It's, it's like... <laughs> It's kind of like um, Teenage Fan Club Top Trumps, isn't it? Oh, yes. No, we wanted Norman, but we weren't no, allowed to yeah, have well, Norman. there you go. Anyway, love, we're coming up to the last song, so it's been brilliant. Thank you. Thank, I've really enjoyed thank it. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, so we started with The Clash and Training Vein and talking about it was written for Viv Albertine, etc., etc., and we're going to finish with The Slits. Oh, no, I had to choose this because I think every 15-year-old girl, or even younger, should yeah. listen to this. It's a great song. And it was odd at the time. Yeah. It still sounds odd, but it I think does, that's yeah. why it's so great. And the message in it, I was torn between this and Oh Bondage Up Yours. Yeah. As a, I don't think there are enough songs of women saying, fuck you, and I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> and this is, fuck you, I'm going to do what I want. And that's why I absolutely love it. Right. Well, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps per- per- they should have it in, like, primary schools or something. <laughs> Thing, say, I like, think they like should. Assembly, assembly music. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you so much, Karen. It's been a pleasure. Lovely, love. And uh, yes, we're going to leave you with this: the slits and typical girls.
Okay, that was the last song. You can fast forward and turn over the tape now. Radio Lewis. Local. Community. Community. Webcasting.